Ronald Lockett lived in Bessemer, Alabama in a neighborhood uh, called Pipe Shop because of the steel foundry that is located there. And when he finished school in the 1980s, there was not a lot of opportunity for him. And so even though the situation was pretty dire in, in Bessemer, his street that he lived on, 15th Street, was actually a very inspiring place because he lived there with his great aunt, Sarah Dow Lockett, who raised him. Um, and she lived to be 105 and really introduced him to a world of beauty through her gardening and quilt making practices that directly impacted Lockett's work. Um, but his true mentor and muse and collaborator and neighbor was his older cousin, Thornton Dial Sr., who we today really recognize as being one of the greatest artists to come out of uh, the United States in the 20th century. Ronald Lockett and Thornton Dial lived on the same street. They were related by blood. Lockett would go over and sit with Dial as Dial worked on pieces and apparently was just about the only person that Dial would admit to his studio when he was at work. And then Dial would go down the street and sit with uh, Lockett and they would comment upon each other's work uh, and really drew heavily on each other's uh, innovations. They really were two principal members of a larger school of artistic practice in the Birmingham Bessemer area. My uncle was a big kind of like driving force into my artwork because I told him I wanted to go to uh, I wanted to go to art school. And he told me that I had the best school of all, you know, just you know making artwork or whatever. But you know he was a big uh, he was a big influence on my artwork, and I mean uh, he helped me to kind of find out that you could take like you could take tin or barbed wire or just different smaller metals, you know, and make things out of. I remember one time I made the piece called uh, Vanishing Territory. And I remember when I made it, well, he was standing behind me when I was drawing it. And I never really erased or anything on my, on my, on my thing of the wolves. And, you know, he was looking surprised at what I was doing. But then I was just amazed at you know, what he was doing as well. You know, so I was kind of proud of myself that he had some kind of mutual respect you know, for my artwork, just like I had for him. Toward the end of his career, Ronald Lockett became increasingly engaged with a new form of media that was literally the salvaged metal from the buildings that surrounded where he lived in the pipe shop neighborhood of Bessemer, Alabama. And at the same time, he wanted to continue old themes that had been in his work since the, the start. And these were themes that could be historical, uh, they could be personal, uh, they could be themes that sprang from ideas about romantic love or the deep well of spiritual faith which defined his community. The bombing of Oklahoma City, the destruction of the Murrah building, and in particular the loss of life of the children who perished in that explosion in the daycare center, really deeply affected Lockett. And he undertook to make a group of works that really spoke to the emotional impact of that event. I think like you look at other artwork or whatever, it makes you want to kind of like go out there and uh, express yourself and whatever you're trying to express, you try to be honest, honest about what you're trying to say through that piece. And that's what I try to do in, into my Oklahoma piece. I like how it came out because I didn't want to offend anybody that was kind of like connected to that tragedy. But if I did make a piece, I like it to be some kind of uh, way of expressing you know, how those people might have felt you know, through that piece. Lockett's work really moves between the deeply personal and the broadly historical. Um, some works are directly referencing experiences that he or his family members had, while others are about uh, events and often traumas that um, really occurred on a national or global scale. I think Lockett had a very deep sense of empathy with his fellow 
men, women, and animals. Uh, it's, it's really a remarkable um, aspect of his personality that comes through in his artwork. Um, and I think that that aspect, again, of, of who he was, um, was a major part of what kind of artist he was. Um, somebody who was not afraid to kind of reach beyond his personal lived experience and relate to people uh, from all over the world and all across time. Well, my artwork, you know, ever since I've been a kid, it always has been my strength. You know, something positive about me. You know, you know, lately I've been going through a lot of, you know, hard times where, you know, I've kind of like lost my way, but, you know, anytime I, you know, kind of want to uh, regain myself when I lose myself, I go back to my artwork, my joints, 